So in this session, we are going to learn about what are the disadvantages of an array and the second is what is the linked list and what is the memory representation of the linked list. So let's start as we have seen in the previous video, what is an array, how we can implement it and what is the memory representation of an array. So but there are some disadvantages of an array. Let's take the same example we took in the previous video. Let's say you just host a party and you invite your friends and you want to manage that how many friends came and just friends came or some other people came or not. So for that, as you are busy in organizing the party, you just put the boxes there and you ask your friend to bring a bowl with them and write their name on it. And when they enter into the house, simply put the bowl inside the box, right? So they started coming and they keep on adding the bowl inside the boxes. And let's say some of friends uh, just didn't show up. So there are only few friends who came up. So what is the wastage here? You can see uh, the boxes are wasted here, right? So you invited some friends, but some couldn't come. So these boxes are wasted. Similarly, if in an array, if you are going to define the size of an array, so if the size is 10, means the index will start from 0 to 9, the rest of the uh, memory location will be wasted if uh, the elements are less than the capacity, right? So this is first disadvantage that the memory will get wasted. Second is, in case if uh, all the memory spaces are occupied and you want some more space for adding some new elements, let's say you just change your mind and you want to invite some more friends at the last moment, right? Or some of your friends insisted to invite some more friends. So in that case, the boxes are not uh, as much as needed, right? So in that case, if the size of the array is fixed, right? Here the size of the array is fixed. So when it, the array is full, you need to create new array of double size and copy previous array into the new array, right? This is the disadvantage, means if you want to add some more elements, in that case, uh, also it also called the dynamic array. In that case, you just uh, look for some more memory space of double size of the previous array and you just get all the data get copied from here to the new location right so which is going to consume the memory right because uh, you are going to take again the large memory right second thing is you are going to take the cpu cycles to copy that all those values right and also to free up the previous space right third thing is inserting and deleting the element from an array is expensive Again, as you have seen the, in the previous video, if you are going to delete an element or insert the element, it is going to take uh, much time because you need to ship all the element to the forward or the backward depending on the location of the, the element to be inserted or deleted, right? So these are the disadvantages of using an array. So to overcome these disadvantages, we are going to use linked list. Uh, let's see what is going to happen in the linked list first let's say we are having this memory locations right and each block is of one byte and these arrows are showing that the memory is large than you see so these are just the uh, uh, location we are going to use let's say we want a linked list or you can say simply the data i want to store it to a list which is going to be integer type means the data type is integer so the data type is integer which means each element is going to take four bytes for single element or you can say simple single uh, integer value right so let's say i'm going to use these four bytes because a single block is taking one byte so four bytes are going to store one value right this is how we store the value inside the memory right but here what we will do we will going to take eight bytes why eight bytes i just wanted to store a single value which is going to take 
4 bytes let's say the memory addresses are from 40 to 43 to 42 to 43 but when i'm going to store a single value i will ask the uh, compiler to get the 8 bytes right so why i'm taking these 8 bytes i just want two things here first the data and second is a pointer right so first in the first four bytes i'm going to store the value i want to store and second a null pointer right which is going to save some other value right we will see soon that so this particular data is going to be right as data but this null pointer is called as link what does it mean let's say i'm going to insert one more value let's say the next value is 11 and again as i'm going to ask for storing one more value i'm going to take eight bytes instead of a single byte right so what is going to happen i'm not storing the values into a continuous memory locations as we did in the previous uh, example of array here what i can do is i'm going to store the value somewhere anywhere in the memory location wherever the compiler is going to get the space and i'm going to link these values how we can link them i'm going to store the address of this particular uh, element the second one what it will do now the first element is stored at the location of 240 which is having the value also the address of next node or next element here inside the link list i'm going to use the word node instead of element you can use element also that's okay so here i'm using the address here so that i can access the next element easily so if i know the address of next element i can simply jump from here to here by using the pointer right so in this element i am going to take the next uh, you can say the link part as a null because it is going to show that there is no other element further so if let me write this like this data in the link so these are linked now how there's data there's a link link is going to show to the next address and uh, at this particular address we are having a data and the link and here link is null means there is no other element there are only two elements in this list and let's say i add one more value and uh, it got the space as 340 so here you need not to worry for a uh, continuous memory location you can save anywhere and you just need to get this address and save this here right at this particular um, memory location right because i took eight bytes for four for the data and four bytes for the address right so i'm going to store this address here and here again the third element is also linked with this and now again the last element because this is the last element in the list so it is going to point to the null means there is no other element and if i'm going to add more element more element so in that case i'm going to simply write the address of the next element and simply get the space for that element and save that right so this is how i can store the data in a continuous manner but the memory locations are non-continuous right okay so what is linked list so a linked list is sequential list of data of same data type you can write same here right so data is of same data type which is sequential but it contains two fields data in the link and data is stored in non-continuous manner in the memory location so data can be accessed in a continuous manner how let's say we are having this data right so next data will be at this address so i'm accessing the data continuously right but the data is now stored in continuous manner let me uh, change these with the values so let's say the first value is 250 and i want to access the next value so i must jump to the 250 memory location and then at 250 memory location i'm going to get the second element uh, and let me write these address also 
okay so first thing you must know is the head head means the address of the first element which is going to be the base address because these are the four bytes so it will be 240 41 42 43 right so the base address is the first byte right so the first byte is 240 so 240 is the base address at which you are going to access the first element and after reaching to the first element you must go to the link and link will show you the address of the next element it is like you are going to play the treasure hunt right so you first get the first clue which is the uh, first base address which is head and after reaching that address you are going to get the second clue and to get to the next element you have to search for this particular address and after reaching here you will get one more clue and keep on going right and if there is null means there is no other treasure left right so this is how linked list work we will do some more operations on linked list in upcoming videos okay